All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And this is going to be a cool interview today. Today, I am here with my friend, Alex Makarski. Alex, welcome, man. So awesome to have you today. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Man, me too. And, and you know, you and I were just talking before uh, uh, I hit the record button and I was, and we were talking about like, okay, when was it? that you and I first connected and you reminded me it was, I, I knew it was when I had the publishing company and, and we were doing all uh, over that 12 year period, we did almost 600 strategic partnerships and, and we sold uh, $16.1 million worth of that training. And you reminded me that you had somehow found out about me and, and, you know, you were like, Kevin, you, you know, part of your, your, your training that you did was around Google AdWords. And I'm like, oh yeah, it was. And, and you were like, yeah, that's what I reached out to you. And, and so we go back a ways and now, you know, we, we got reconnected a few years ago at, at Perry Marshall's event. And, and then when uh, in 2020, when COVID uh happened and I and I launched the tribe for leaders community you became part of that and now that we're doing the impact and legacy and I've we've kind of we're 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 escalating is what we're doing you know what we are I personally am going through, through some immense immense growth and uh it, it's really cool to watch what is happening and I know you have been too over the last couple of years and it's been really cool to watch you grow and your company grow and your impact grow. And so I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today, Alex. And, and what I'd like to do is just kind of start, I'm gonna turn it over to you so you can share a little bit of your, of your background, what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work that you do, and just kind of let us know that, who is Alex Makarski? What is Alex all about? I'm still trying to figure this out myself, but <laughs> I'll, I'll try to not make my resume completely boring. Uh, but going back to that event, like when we did this uh, joint venture and you presented your product, mm -hmm. not only did you teach Google AdWords, I wasn't doing that at the time. I was setting up managing marketing for some info product companies, and that was one of the joint ventures that I set up. You were one of the last standing marketers still doing teleseminars when everyone went webinar. Uh -huh, like uh -huh. You were still doing the teleseminar. I still vividly remember that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And and your stuff sold, unlike yeah. most other people's. <laughs> yes, I did teleseminars for years. <laughs> so... I just uh, thought I, I'll, I'll mention that because I, I thought that was that was a really interesting factoid. So um, where do I come from? I grew up in Russia, um, have an engineering degree. I always wanted to be a software developer. Computer started appearing as I was growing up. And uh, then I learned how to be a software developer and got a job and I kind of sucked at it. And, uh, um, and I had two options, get fired or get promoted. I chose promoted. I became a consultant. I'm working with big companies, McDonald's, Procter & Gamble, Siemens, Colgate. Like this, these were my clients back in the day. Like as a young, like in my mid twenties, like I, these were my clients. And uh, um, I, in, like we had a company that implemented uh, database systems and accounting software. And uh, I um, made a path from an employee number five or six, like translating manuals from one language to another to you know basically running three departments within this company as a, as a CTO and and then uh, in '98 uh, Russia defaulted um, and uh, I found a job in Canada so we moved to Canada and I've been here since last century as I say yeah um, and uh, had a similar gig with a similar company Toronto a company called Think Adventures and we worked with a lot of big companies like large food service companies, banks. And uh, we did what we call these days, we call it big data. Like we did very similar work back then. We just didn't have a fancy name for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we would build systems where we would collect 
sales receipts from a bunch of restaurants, like hundreds and hundreds of locations across um, all of Canada. And we have the U U.S. clients as well. And uh, bringing all this data into a central data warehouse and then analysts would be able to go in and slice and dice this data and look for insights. Okay. And then uh, uh, in this company, we went through, you know, all the dot-com meltdown and the 9-11, like all, all this really bad stuff happened um, when I was there and and there was a, it was a nuclear winter in, in, in IT. It was very hard to find clients. And uh, most of my peers, I was I was a senior manager in the company and there were three other guys who were like second echelon of management. They all wanted to do the techie stuff. Uh, and uh, everyone like shifted sales and marketing to me. I didn't know a whole lot about it, but I took, took it on and with enthusiasm started buying books and reading things and articles, special reports. Came across a guy named Perry Marshall. Uh, who have been following ever since. He just uh, set up a shop as a marketing consultant for high-tech companies. I'm like, that's what I need. So I learned um, enough to become obnoxiously confident um, <laughs> and uh, quit my job when, when I didn't like something that was going on in, in the company. I just with that job called Turkey, I figured I'll be the next Jay Abraham or Dan Kennedy or something like that. And, and we'll help a whole bunch of small businesses with marketing mm -hmm. and uh, struggled immensely for a number of years. Did a lot of silly things, affiliate marketing, ad swaps, like uh, MLMs, you name it. So you and I connected when I was going through one of those phases, when I was doing joint venture deals with some info product companies where they don't pay me anything up front mm -hmm. and we split the spoils if there's any um and very often there would be spoils but they would decide not to pay me and uh so it wasn't a good time and um i remortgaged my house twice during that period mm -hmm. um and uh and meanwhile i've been learning i've, I've been studying a lot of things and eventually things started to kind of click in the right place and yeah, we get into place. And uh, um, at some point, I uh, launched a local business with a friend of mine um, where my job was building, like generating leads from Google and Bing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and his job was just coordinating um, our contractors. So um, that I learned how to run Google campaigns using my own credit card, like with my own, on my own nickel. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the uh, I wrote the articles. So I did the SEO. I did uh, I built the ads. I built the landing pages. I set up call tracking for the first time. That was but I was doing it for myself, and uh, I would like I, I would work for a few days and you know tweak things and improve them, and then the, this thing would just coast for several months. I wouldn't have to touch it, uh, and I would. On the side, I would try to do some other consulting projects. Okay. And when this thing would require my attention, I would go back and tweak it again and, you know, fine tune it and, you know, improve this, rebuild that and, you know, leave it on its own for, for another few months and, and go do some consulting. And some months, this little business, that would be my only income. And there would be a car payment, a mortgage payment, sometimes a little bit more. Um, and and uh, when I looked at this, like this is this is scalable. This is actually really good. Um, so as this business was going on, I got a consulting contract with a company in the Silicon Valley. It was a tech startup with some pretty amazing clients: Netflix, Cisco. Um, I was the only marketing person on the team. They, there's a, there were a whole bunch of engineers. There was a CEO who did sales, and I was the marketing department not a marketing guy, a marketing department. Wow. You know, wow. myself. So you doing everything, email, follow-ups, pages, pretty much. Yeah, just, you know, spitting all the plates, juggling all the balls, <laughs> um, running ads, doing everything. So uh, it was it was a great company. Um, series A funded, looking for Series B. Instead of coming across an investor, they found the buyer. A company called Brocade picks them up. $2 billion company. Um, buys the little guys, um, everyone gets a big bonus, I get fired because I was a contractor. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm like, oh, crap, like that was that was a good gig. Um, and and it went away because I did a good job. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, so that's what made me think about, you know, what what the next phase of my marketing uh, career might look like. And I realized that the agency model is probably the best way to do it. And clients are going to be with you for, for a chapter in their book. They're not going to be there for the entire book. Um, they will be there. Um, like they, you, you catch them. Like there's, there's a sweet spot the way you can help them to go from point A to point B, or maybe, maybe not even usually not point A is going to be from point D to point E or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, you know, then they become a part of a bigger organization with a big in-house team, um, or they're just going to approach things differently. So if that's the model, then I need a bunch of these clients working with me at the same time. And if, and if I'm going to have a whole bunch of them, then I need a team around me. Yeah. So, so that's pretty much how I got into the agency game. And, uh, so the agency is about four and a half, five years old now. Okay. Uh, we've been doubling our sales. Uh, for the last three years, uh, uh, we're on track to do it again this year. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uncertainty, but so far so good. We're on track. And uh, yeah, we've been uh, learning a lot, growing a team. Uh, there's, like, we spun off uh, another agency that focuses on data integrations and analytics, all this big data stuff. So I kind of went back to my engineering roots and doing a lot of that work now. And uh, yeah, things things are things are very exciting in our space. There's a lot of new stuff coming down the pike. There's the whole AI GPT, yeah. chat GPT, and GPT four right now is out, and GPT five is going to come out later this year. And they say this thing is going to, you know, this thing is going to be sentient. Um, it's it's going to wake up. Uh, we'll see. Um, but so far, it's it's been uh, it's been a, it's a really exciting time in our industry. There's yeah. there's a lot of retooling going on. Cookies on the way out finally. Like they've been talking about cookies being on, standing on their last leg and needing to needing to retire. So looks like they're going away finally. There's a lot of conversion tracking shifting to the server from the browser. Like everyone has to change the way they do things. There's a lot of automation happening. Mm -hmm. Google, Facebook, Twitter, you know, Pinterest, all these things are, are driven by machine learning, artificial intelligence. There's a giant algorithms that, that are hungry for data. They need more signal, less noise. And uh, we just happen to be the best people to solve this issue right now. Yeah. Or at least some of the best. I'll tell you, we, we are definitely living in fascinating times for sure, you know, and, uh, and, you know, <clears throat> I know in, in my experience, um, you know, re relationships continue to just become more and more valuable all the time. And, uh, Absolutely. and, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's been such an honor hosting this podcast in fact you know it, this is hands down the most rewarding thing i've done in my 27 years of being an entrepreneur being the host of this podcast and getting to have these conversations allowing just such amazing entrepreneurs to share their stories and their experiences around this so that the listeners who are also entrepreneurs founders and ceos they they just are inspired by what they hear and they're like man i want a place more intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in my own life. And uh, but everything's like that. Everything's like that. Like the more, the like we, the the easy it is to photocopy something, right? Like reprint the painting. The more the original is going to be uh, valued. Yeah. But the and the more they automate something, organic food. Like non-GMO food, like it's way more expensive than, you know, the regular stuff you can buy at the store, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's like this and the relationships are going to be so much more important in the coming years. Uh, so much more powerful. Like when you when you build a strong Rolodex, when when these are the, the people who you can count on, 
these people who know they can count on you. In in the world of AI and robots, that human one-on-one -on -one connection is going to be so much more valuable and powerful. Yeah. Even more so than in the past. That's that's the that's the dichotomy of of the way the, the this civilization is evolving i i'm I, I do believe that this is going to be very very important in the coming years yeah yeah well now that we've got a little bit of context set i want to i'm going to switch gears and i'm going to reiterate the question for the benefit of the list so alex have you ever met or been introduced to someone who completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons. And, and Alex, I'm just really excited to dig into this with you and give you the opportunity to share your story and your experience around this topic of just most valuable relationships. Well, there, there are several people I can mention. Uh, professionally, I need to give a hat tip to Perry Marshall. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for a lot of things that I do professionally, a lot of in the ways I think about business problems and marketing problems and evolution problems and in where we're going as civilization. So um, you and I reconnected at the Peter Marshall event about five years ago. And um, yeah, he's been showing up in my life um, at a lot of, in, in some important inflection points in my, in my life, on my path. Yeah. So I got to give him a hat tip for being there and being who he is. Um, and, uh, and also I went through the dark ages, as I call this period of my life, uh, of uh, figuring out what works. And uh, my wife stuck by me, and uh, she completely supported me, even though an, uh, an outside observer would, would probably make a statement that uh, I was jeopardizing my family's future financially, and probably destroying it completely in my experimentation <laughs> with all those different things. Uh, she stuck by me. She believed in me. And uh, Marion Wright is... Uh, is uh is such a huge success tip, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so um those of you all I would like to mention today. Yeah, yeah. So I will I, I love digging into this. And so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you a question based on this. So if if, if you want you if you want to look at either Perry or your wife. Um, think back to a, a time where because of one of these relationships that you were able to make a really substantial impact, a big impact in this world that, that you know, hands down, would have never happened or never took place if not for the relationship that you had with either with Perry or with your wife. And I want to, I want to look at that a little bit. Sure. I mean, there, there were several, there, there were so many times when I was ready to give up. Okay. And, you know, maybe go, go and take a job or something. Mm -hmm. All right. But um, I, I, I was, I was ready to throw in the towel and, uh, um, you know, having having a person who's so close to you to support you and encourage you to keep going. Um, like I, I probably wouldn't wouldn't have made it. Like if if she would, would not be there encouraging me. Um, Perry is a uh, is a very interesting individual. Uh, he's he's someone who knows how to build um, space to create space for himself to think about big issues. Mm -hmm. To him, his business is an enabler of large, of of uh, of important projects that will create legacy. Um, not in terms of, you know, money or assets or anything like that. In terms of our understanding of 
how things work in the universe mm -hmm. um, of uh, something that's going to enable some scientific discoveries that will improve the lives of millions of people. Mm -hmm. Heck, maybe maybe he'll help discover a cure for cancer or something like that because he's, that's what he's working on right yeah. now. Yeah. And, and if you do the honest work of this kind, it's not financially re rewarding. Like if you're doing things outside of the uh, pharma industrial complex, like you, you, you essentially an outsider, and uh, and no one's opening the doors for you. No, um, you have to fight through the red tape and bureaucracy, um, and there's a lot of money working against you, conspiring against you. So mm -hmm. he's using his business to enable himself. Uh, to to be able to work on all those big and important issues, so so this is this is very inspiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell I think you, you had him on, on your podcast, right? Yeah, I did have him on, and and you know it's interesting. Perry and I first met in 1999 at a Dan Kennedy seminar at the uh, Embassy Suites Hotel on Camelback in Phoenix, Arizona. That was before GKIC was ever a thing, any of that. And uh, and I met Perry at that event, and, and we've been friends ever since. And, and I remember Perry was handing around a piece of paper and saying, hey, put your name and email address on this piece of paper. Uh, I, I, I can't remember what platform he started, but he started this, this group online. It was like... I don't know whether I don't know what it was. I don't know what platform it was online back then, but uh, he got a bunch of really amazing marketers to be a part of that group. And and I remember like John Carlton and I I mean just all these guys that were coming in there and like you could ask questions and get get responses from some really smart people, you know. And and Perry organized that whole thing and I was part of that group for quite a while, you know. And uh and, and Perry is definitely one of these incredibly deep thinkers that, man, he just, he, I mean, he spends a lot of time thinking about stuff and coming up with just ways of looking at things that, that like, I, I don't think anybody else could come up with but him, you know, and, uh, and I agree. This this work that he does, yeah, is uh, it, it's pretty amazing to watch, and and uh, and you know, and, I, and 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 on a personal level, you know, I remember when <laughs> I remember when uh, my, my, we we have a family foundation, and and so as a family, I, you know, we've got our own kids, we've got grandkids, and and we'll we we have this orphanage down in Jamaica that we support, and we'll go down there and we'll go hang out at this orphanage and stuff, and I. It's a really cool experience. And, and one day we were down there and we were on our way back to our hotel after a day spent at the orphanage. And my wife announces to me, honey, I want to adopt, which I about just like, what? I'm like, honey, we got six kids. We're good. You know, and, and she's like, I know, I know, but I want to give one child a leg up that uh, they wouldn't or ordinarily get that. And I, and I want to really impact one child that way. And, and, and so as soon as we got back home to the States, Perry was the first guy I called. I'm like, Perry, help. <laughs> of course. Because I knew he'd of adopt course. Me. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Perry. Yeah, starts, twice, yeah. Perry starts laughing and, 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 and he's like, Kevin, he's like, this wasn't your idea, was it? And I'm like, no. He's like, this was not my idea. This was totally Lisa's idea. And he's like, yeah. He's like, there's a term for us. It's called RH, which is the reluctant husband, you know. And uh, and yeah. so it's really cool because like Perry could totally relate to what I was feeling in that moment. And he could just kind of calm my nerves. And and he was like, you know, and I'm like, Ter Perry, tell me about your experience. And He's like, Kevin, it's been a pretty amazing experience, man. It's been a pretty amazing experience. And, and, and through that, you know, we, we, I ended up getting on, I, I was on Perry's mailing list and, and, he, and he sends a Christmas card every year along with the Christmas letter. And I remember, you know, we, we did end up adopting. In fact, Abby, uh, she 
just let me think here she just because everybody's this is birthday time of year uh brock's birthday is in 10 more days abby and ellie just had their birthdays last month in march and and so uh ellie turned 13 and abby turned 12. so we have had abby for nine years she's been living in our house and it's like she's always amazing. been here and um and i remember one year getting the Christmas letter from Perry and his wife and them talking about how they were adopting a second child. And I read that letter when it got here in the mail. And before I gave it to Lisa to share with her, I'm like, I'm just going to let you know right now, before you read this Christmas letter, we are not, we're not doing it. A second child. <laughs> <laughs> so, <and so. laughs> but, but um, yeah, so, you know, it, I look at like, you know, uh, the, this, this whole subject of relationships and like, you know, you, you did such a really great job of, of just driving home this point again today that, you know, cause I've firmly believed for a long time now that as entrepreneurs, relationships are the most valuable asset we possess and and everything else stems from that you know and uh well authentic authenticity is going to rise in value yeah you know if it's automated it's not authentic anymore it's yeah. it's uh, cheapens the value right so yeah it, this is going to be more valuable not less yeah yeah and i'll tell you you know it's uh i i am just so inspired by what's going on and, and uh, you know, just, yeah, bringing like-minded people together to have just real, meaningful conversations where we just be ourselves and like, yeah, you know what? I'm world-class at this thing that I do here, but you know, I could really use some help right here. <laughs> And I don't know about this thing, or I want to do this thing, but I'm not quite sure how, or or whatever that is. And 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 being able to surround ourselves with not only people who have years of experience and expertise, but who are just giving generous people that they just want to contribute, they want to help, they want to serve, because they know. That by by giving they they also get to be on the receiving end of things too and stuff and uh, so I, I really you know I mean for for anybody listening to this Alex that is like man Kevin I just really like Alex I really appreciate Alex and the way that he shows up so I, I'm just gonna throw something out here because I I'm gonna you know uh oh <laughs> you are. <laughs> Just you guys, you and your team are just world class at what you guys do and stuff. And and you know, we were on a a recent call with the group and stuff, and you you casually announced how you had scaled one of your guys' clients. You got you and the team had scaled one of your guys' clients to uh, a million dollars in ad spend for the month. And and of course, all the rest of us, our jaws just hit the floor and like, we were like, what did you just say? And you casually announced that, but I'm just like, wait a minute, I, there is like a very small percentage of agencies could, that could ever even say that. And, and you know, you, you guys have some serious chops to be able to get results like that. And, 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 you know, when you shared that, it really helped me wrap my mind around like how much of a skill set you guys really possess and stuff. And, and, and it's really helped me become more efficient in doing what I did. Cause like now I'm just like, wait, geez, anybody I know, who is running a business where they're investing in advertising online and they're doing stuff. And if they're at that, you're already at like, you know, six figures plus an ad spend every month and they want to scale up. Well, I'm just like, you know what? I, I know the guy. I can totally hook you up with the guy who knows how to do that. Him and his team know how to do that. And, and, and so, yeah. So now anybody that happens to listen to this, you guys all know Alex is the guy, <laughs> Alex and his team. And, and so you know, I, I share that because, you know, the sometimes the the people 
who are the most gifted, the most talented, the most qualified, aren't necessarily out there, uh, you know, in, in the marketplace, like, they're not easily found necessarily. And, and, uh, and that's why well, we've done zero, zero marketing, like, yeah, in, yeah. in, in, in the four and a half years of running the agency, we've never done any marketing at all. Yeah. Like I, I, I have a, a very basic one page website. <laughs> and that's it right now. Uh, we'll try to address this issue this year, possibly, maybe, but really, yeah, it's just been too busy working. Yeah, yeah. Well, for anybody listening to this, that is kind of like, man, I really like Alex. I appreciate who he is and how he shows up. Alex, how, what, 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 what's your website? Let them know your website so they can at least like check it out and see if they can find out more about what you guys are doing. Uh, sure. So for uh, for advertising, it's clickmakers.io. It's okay. so where you Google Premier Partner. And uh, we run on other networks as well. Google is our jam. Uh, and uh, the data company is called uh, measurebit.com. So any issues with tracking, attribution, data integrations, stitching together, you know, putting together the Humpty Dumpty of, uh, of the website, putting together again. That's what we're really good at. You know, people with multiple carts and page builders and all this different, like a Frankenstein monster of the site, you know, <laughs> which most of, of the websites are out oh. there are that. Mm -hmm. So that's what measurebit, measurebit.com is very good at. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, Alex, any, any last thing you want to share before we call it a wrap? Oh, gosh. Um, can't think of much. Um, I think what you're doing is amazing. Um, I think I think this is exactly the kind of thing to do in the age of AI and automation. As human beings, we need to push in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. like if um, like we need to look for as as many things we can automate and delegate all the icky non-creative stuff. Let the machines do it and focus on the things that only we as humans can do and do them better. Yeah. Which is, today is an example of that. You know, there's this one-on-one -on -one personal relationships, you know, breaking bread, if it's, even if it's a virtual one, virtual coffee, you know, a real coffee even better with people. That's, that's, that's gonna be so much more powerful and, and important in the coming yeah. years. Amen, amen. Well, Alex, once again, I want to really just thank you for taking the time to have this conversation today. Really appreciate you, man. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me.